Looks like it's gonna work. I think my battery's dying. Let's see, is that battery dying? Huh, it is. Anyway, uh, my battery's getting low. Uh, we're cutting lumber here. Uh, this is for the new spreader. I'm going to add wooden pieces to the top of it. So, it says in there that I can put an 8 inch uh, upper on it through the uh, through the options menu and I don't know that I want to put 8 inches. I kind of would like to have at least a foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pieces into 6 inch pieces. Uh, 6 inches thick and then I'll cut them at 4 and a half inches. So I'm pretty close to where I need to be. So I'm at like six and six is 12 so i do that double them up at six inches and that gives me a foot right so that's what i'm gonna do i need a foot worth of uh a foot's worth of wood to do this correctly and really what that's going to do is it's going to give me a little bit more for uh protection on the spreader itself and a little bit more capacity with the uh compost and then if i want to screw on taller sides i can do that as well so that's what we're up to that's what we're doing this is a piece of white oak that was salvaged from a storm so salvage wood good deal right good deal so here we go well we're trying to get away with it this wood this rotten wood this tree was in the woods for a long time knocked over so i'm gonna take an inch off of here and i'm gonna take an inch off the bottom and then I'm gonna cut two six inches. And then I'm gonna cut them to four and a half inches. Did that thing stop moving for a second? And then I'm gonna cut them to four and a half inches, which should take the most of the white wood off. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. good clean slate all right I got a hundred percent battery life okay so we've got these uh, beams in here that I cut on the sawmill me and Tim and William this is white oak white oak is extraordinarily tough they make ships out of this and uh, sail the seven seas at least in England they did but anyways this is white oak uh, the white oak tree is pretty tough and it can take a beating for sure. This piece was salvaged, I said already that it was salvaged. And what I'm gonna do is we're going to cut it and put it on the top rail. So I made them six inches and six by four and a half. That's the nice thing about owning your own sawmill, six by four and a half. So we got six inches there, six by four and a half it is. About as six and four and a half as you can get. The mill looked like it cut pretty good. We did have an issue with the blade. I, I got pinched down the other end. Uh, the log was too big, wouldn't go through the cutthroat. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to lay, hey, give me that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay them on the top here. Let me climb my fat behind up there, which I'm not fat. I've lost like a lot of weight. Gained some muscle though. Anyway, so up top here, it's four and a half inches wide. 
So we'll run it the full length of the spreader, and this is a 16 foot spreader, if you didn't know. I'll climb on up in here. It's a 16 foot litter slash lime spreader. And then what I'll do is I will lay the second piece across here and we'll butt them in here like that. All right, so then I'll just bolt it, drill holes through one, two, probably four bolts there and probably eight bolts here on either side. We've got them someplace and do the same thing here. And then the next board that we do will overlap the outer one and we'll lag them in to the outer ones. Boom, boom, boom. I will be countersinking them so that they're not sticking up, creating a problem. And we'll lag them in so that way it'll tie them all in together and it will be strong. Uh, the whole point in that is to keep the loader operator from bashing the sides of the spreader while adding a foot of height to the overall capacity of the spreader. Um, I wouldn't fill it completely full with lime and want to travel a long distance with it because the tires, they're only eight ply tires. They should be 10 or 12 ply tires, but they're only eight ply tires, so kind of got to be careful there. Uh, but for the most part, we're, we don't want to increase the capacity for lime. We want to increase the capacity for the compost. And the width of this chain is pretty wide. It's 34 inches. So there's 34 inches of uh, width to go out that gate. We can put up to three ton to the acre without any issues at six miles per hour. We could go to, well, we could go to five to seven ton to the acre, but um, what I want to do is put it at 20 foot spread pattern and then travel across the field a couple times. So we put, say, three and a half ton to the acre the first pass and then turn around and go three and a half ton to the acre to second pass ensuring that we will have proper coverage and that'll be for corn for soybeans we're going to i've already decided that i'm going to do two and a half two to two and a half tons to the acre of compost for the soybeans incorporated do not put it on top of the ground do not put it on top of the ground do not put it on top of the ground if you're putting the compost on top of the ground, you are losing so much activity in your soil and it isn't even worth it. So anyway, I'm gonna shut my fat mouth. I've been running for about four minutes. I've explained what I'm gonna do. So now I'm just going to do it. So you are ready? Let's get on. All right, so we know what the spreader is gonna be used for now. Uh, it's a entertainment system for my children, big one and small one. What are you doing in there? Uh-oh, I think we're full. I think we're full. Link to this camera. I don't doubt that you are. Is this the first one? Third. No, it's third one. I don't have any link. It won't hook up because of you. Hey. No, you can still hook up. Though. I can't hook up though. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about the Chandler spreader. We gonna talk about the Chandler spreader that okay. Teresa bought? I didn't buy hey, you bought it. So what did you do? And I, I just passed gas and it's enough to kill that, I don't know. <laughs> it's not good. William, you're gonna... So this is playpen, right? Is this your playpen? Alright, so this spreader is a 16-foot Chandler spreader made in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. It is not made in Alabama, like I misspoke the other day, yesterday. A um, couple things that I would do to it, I'm not sure whether I'm going to or not, but it has uh it is a 16 foot box we are adding these pieces of lumber obviously um it does have 7,000 pound axles on it i'm not thrilled with that i'd rather have tens but they claim that they put these axles under up to 24 feet and this is a 16 so i don't think i'm gonna have any problems with weight because the it's more than 60 percent of the weight on the tongue anyway so if there's 14,000 there and there's 60% of the weight there, there's another, uh, I'd say another 14,000 pounds. So that'd be 28,000 pounds, but it's not going to hold that much material. I would never do that to it because the tires won't hold that much. So anyway, uh, 
the things that I like about this spreader when we did see it, when I did see it right away, obviously was the box steel. I saw 20 plus year old spreaders at another dealership that the worst part that I saw on them, well, there was a couple of worst parts about them. This is all hydraulic. It runs off of two pumps. One runs this, the, the chain, draper chain, not the draper chain, but the drag chain or the bed chain. And the other one runs the spinners. This actually has the heavy duty 30 inch spinner over the 24 inch spinner, which gives me great joy because it does. It brings me great joy because this thing's really will sling. There's no joy or pleasure being around you. I'll tell you right now, you pain, ow, you hit me in the head. Anyway, crazy Asian. Um, they have different options with these things. This one has the bar every other tooth, every other link and you can get, for the most part, a standard is every third. And if you want to buy the more expensive one or build the more expensive one, you just add another bar and you can put a bar on every link. Um, I, have, I have built these chains before for the Stoltzfus. This has a 34 inch throat, whereas the Stoltzfus, I do believe was only 22. Uh, it was quite anemic if you ask me. Are you watching this? Yeah. yeah. You little pricks. Are you serious? You've got that thing all hooked up? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, what's your name? Say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a spreader monkey. I'm a spreader monkey. Uh, this is not a fertilizer spreader. Even though my father thinks that I should be able to spread fertilizer with it, I would not do that to it because it will rot it. Uh, these things can spread lime and litter all day, every day. Uh, one of the worst things I saw on the older models that were tore all to hell is these spreader units are quite low to the ground. And when you cross ditches, you catch the ditches and it will actually snap the webbing off of that, break it off. And then you've got to weld it all back together again, which is not something I want to do. So we have to be quite careful of the ditches that we cross with it. Um, yeah. Teresa is not the person you want to take to a dealership if you're going to buy a used piece of equipment. Uh, she was like, you better buy that, you know, and it was, it didn't take any arm twisting because honestly, the price of this thing, it, it's a 2021 litter of lime, 16 foot, $23,900. I've seen this very same model online for, what was that, 32000 and I'm like, huh? What the heck? How is this thing this price? And the others were thirty-two thousand, ten thousand more. Well, I could have had some other options like the Ravens uh, uh, rate control and everything. This is an option. I took it out before we even put anything in because uh, we're not running pelletized lime. We're running damp lime, and that will just be like a bridge in the middle. And when I go to put the spent compost in, it will just bridge up over that and cause me a major ass ache. So how this thing works. Okay. So the standard Chandler spreader speed is six miles per hour. To me, that is grossly undersped. It's very slow. Maybe if you're running a 4230 across the field, that would be acceptable, but we're not. We're running bigger tractors, which isn't a big deal because all you do is go to the Chandler website. You type in what you're running, the weight of the material you're running, which is just that little red thing up there in the corner. You use your cubic foot weigh scale. And I'll give you how many pounds per cubic foot. I will be doing that with the lime. And then you set the, the chain, the drag chain or the, the bed chain to whatever speed you need it to go. And you set your spinners to the width that you would like it to go. It takes a little bit of setting up, but it's very simple. You just start your power takeoff shaft up. That runs the two pumps. There's two separate pumps. It's not one pump. And then you just adjust it however you want it to be. And then you set that and forget it. So you go to the Chandler website. It tells you, you, you can set the speed that you want to go. So say, I want to go eight miles per hour because we're in a hurry. We want to go eight to 10 miles per hour. So eight to 10 miles per hour. And I want to put down, say three to three to three and a half tons of compost to the acre. Uh, so that sets, you, you use this and you set a stopwatch. You count the revolutions per minute that that chain makes and you calculate the weight and then you can adjust the rate that you are putting it out at. So once you get your bed chain set, your width set, 
And then you can say, okay, I want to go, the, the field is rough. I'm only going to go eight miles per hour. So what I was doing at eight miles per hour at four inches with the, with the uh, lime, I can double my speed in a smooth field, go to eight inches, and that will adjust, well, in theory, that will adjust it to the right uh, rate that I want it to go. So it's pretty simple. It's just speed, weight, and, you know, the, the speed of the chain and the width. So speed, weight, and width of your spread pattern. I said this earlier, I would like to go about on a 20 foot spread pattern with the compost. The reason I want a 20 foot spread count pattern is because I would like to, I think it does a better job of spreading it out. And because we're going to be working it into the soil, it does not need to be shredded to bits. So it's just gonna come out here, it's gonna throw it 10 feet from the center on this side and 10 feet from the center on that side and then I will be able to regulate the width with the tractor quite easily without a GPS if I don't have a GPS because I don't have one anymore, it burned up in the fire. Uh, yeah, so as for the lime, I will be putting uh, on the uh, soybean ground about a ton to a ton and a half of lime to the acre and on the corn ground a ton to a ton and a half to lime to the acre unless the ground comes back extremely acidic and when I say extremely acidic, acidic anything under 6 pH is, a, is pretty acidic uh, extremely acidic 5.8, 5, 5.6 5, and believe it or not I do have some of that ground so not only do I get lime with the, uh, with the lime that I purchased, but in the compost there is gypsum and lime, which will and does raise the pH. So if I put a ton of the high calcium lime and, the, and then put seven tons of compost on corn ground, I am adding the calcium that's needed to make all the nutrients available and life will be good. And I'm quite excited about this. I'm really excited about this new piece of equipment because I'm a farmer and farmers get excited about new stuff, even if they gotta pay for it, you know? And the one, the funny thing is that there are some individuals that parouse this farm and uh, they just don't seem to get excited about new equipment. And I'm not talking about them at all, but it's okay because I like new equipment. I like the fact that when you go to the field and you've got a new piece of equipment, you're just gonna run it. Uh, and if something is defective, it is under warranty and they will fix it, correct? Yeah. Although in the, uh, war in the brochure that I got with it, or the, the not the brochure, but the, uh, what do you call that? The, uh, the operator's manual, it says, any modifications to the machine will null and void all warranties. That's what I said to you. Well, the crazy thing is there is an option for this thing and it is to put the wood sides on, okay? So the wood sides that they will put on are two by eight. Okay. So what we're going to be putting on is actually four and a half by six. Now would you look at that? Made in Hong Kong for your Wuhan. Oh, you're not kidding me not either. Kidding. That says made in China. Made in Wuhan, see? Come on, Chandler. Come on, Chandler. That does kind of annoy me. Yeah, that's I just saw it. Like, we don't need to be buying this stuff from China. I, honestly, look, it's already rusted. I haven't even used it. And this is a 2021 machine, and it's already rusted. I'm a little annoyed. I want my money back. I don't want my money back. I'm just a little bit annoyed by that. Because there's what no... The tires? Uh, these are American, American Armor yeah. Implement, probably made in China. But I don't know. I am going to find out. Yeah, it should have a made in. They're trying to do away with that made in. In USA. Get out. Yes, made in. Oh yeah, USA. it did say made in USA, but I want to prove it. So right there. Ah, ah. It says on it. So there it is, made in USA. But the rim is made in China. So we got Chinese rims with American tires. Isn't that like an American man and a f Filipina female? Makes an American boy. With Asian descent. Let's go home. Oh, you got a scratch already? What far, far is this? That was from that. Because that thing is heavier than it looks. You know what? You want to paint it? I'll paint it. I think it's just New Holland Red, personally. Already scratching the brand new one. What's wrong with you? Don't worry. It's going to get dirty Let's and scratched go. and all Let's kinds go. of stuff. So, anyhow, that's it. This is the, this is the beginning of... 
Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have to get Teresa versed in spreading. The nice thing with this is that once it is set, all she will have to do is turn on the power takeoff shaft. Yeah, but I don't know the distance to how much I can You set. will be able to see. How many yards, you know? Not yards, feet. We're oh. gonna set it up to be, we're gonna <laughs> set it to be 10 feet, 20 feet from the center. So center to center will be 20 feet. 20 feet. I just want, I want a, the spread pattern to be very close. A lot of guys want to go spreading way out. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to spread way out. No, I don't want that. I want it to be, because I think it'll do more, a better job if you do more passes than many passes. Because the farther you throw it, the heavier stuff will go out, but it chews it up so bad when it hits those things that it, it just does not... It doesn't throw it as far as you like it. Wind will carry it if you crank those spinners up to go the 40 feet. I might go 15 feet, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it's gonna be, and we're gonna make it work because this is what we got. I wasn't go about to spend uh, $90,000 on a vertical beater manure spreader that I was never happy with the spread pattern of. And to spread lime with it, the tube line spreader was fine, but to spread lime with the tube line, I spread eggshells with it, and it was very hard to regulate, so it, I just think this is the best choice. Don't you think this is the best choice? I think it's the best choice. So, anyway, I guess I'll shut up now, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, you're in trouble, woman. Hey, Will, where's mommy's butt butt? That is mommy's butt butt. Can you go spank mommy's butt butt? Go show mommy's butt butt. Is that bad? Because I had somebody tell me that I was... That's a butt butt, mom. Where's Tim's butt butt? Well... You don't touch Tim's butt butt. With the, with the rod. Whack him with the rod, Will. <laughs> He's like, I know better. I, he knows better. He's not going to mess with the Squatch. So. Messing with Sasquatch, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so we'll put these boards up there tomorrow. We'll have to figure. I'll probably make a couple of steel brackets for the corners. Yeah. Instead, of, yeah, it, maybe I'll countersink a couple of steel brackets in, or I'll, I'll cut some, I'll cut some one those... <laughs> Those three inch ones over there, something. I gotta do something because I, I just don't want it to be. But it won't be null and void because we're not going as high as what, as what the Chandler company had said. And I know damn well we're gonna load the top of this thing like there's no freaking tomorrow. And yeah, buddy. And we can even just nail boards up from the sides once we get these on. If we say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna add 10 inches and I just get the sawmill out and put a 14 inch board up the side of it. Or you get some of those boards up there. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Bolt steel to it, eh, whatever. Whatever it is, it is. We'll try to destroy it, right? Isn't that what everybody says? Well, one lonely farmer destroys everything he touches. 